Right, so I'm hoping to have a very um, special guest on the stream, a good friend of mine, David Dennis, um, from London. Um, and he's going to join me via Skype, hopefully. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to start, and I've just Googled backgammon. And I'm just going to pick a video. I think the one I've already chosen, I think the one I'm going to go for is basically the first one that appears. Um, let's go back to the top. So one of the first ones that appears is this match between Hideaki Ueda and um, Roberto Litzenberger. So um, as long as there's no commentary, I'm going to go through it. Oh, I can hear something. I don't think there is commentary because I've seen this before. Okay, so it's a 15 pointer, and um, Roberto is playing the white. And Hideaki is on top playing blue and they're using a battle box. Okay. I might have to pause this quite a lot and use my arrows. Um, six two is, is so even five four, I'm gonna keep pausing five four. He's already moved the check, but five four is uh, is um oh I need to move my shit. I need to move my shit. So I don't obscure the board with my face. That would help. So the odds on David successfully joining me. About 40, 45%. Okay, so let's make the sky window smaller just in case he decides, but he promised. He would be here. Okay. So what, what I was saying was, um, and I'm you know aiming this at uh, obviously learning people that are improving their game. The four five is um, a bit of a strange play, but it's standard where you um, you hit with the five which is why the hand has taken one of the checkers. Oh, let me sort that out. That's better. Okay, so you hit with the five, and then you come up with the four. And as far as I can see, the reason you hit with the five is that it's so important to stop your opponent from making the, his 18 point. And if you were to just allow him to play his full role, he would have, um, oh my god, 17 numbers? Well, all 11 ones plus uh, um, 4 3, sorry, 11 6. <laughs> 11 6 is plus 4 2, 5 1, that's 15, double 3 is 16, double 2 is 17. So he would have more than um, more than half of his dice rolls would make the 18 point. And since it's a good thing for him to make the 18 point, and therefore a bad thing for you, you want to try and stop him from doing that. And then the 4 is generally you want to split, but it's also even more. Um, I mean, perhaps I'm spending way too much time on the first move. It's way, way advantageous, even more advantageous to split when you don't let your opponent have his full roll. So w imagine that you've got a black checker here, and then white's going to be on the bar. Well, I can put it on the board because that's what's going to happen. Then white will <clears throat> only be able to make actually make the five point now with double one and double three, whereas if he hadn't have been hit and he had his full role to play, he would 
Yeah, I think you get the idea. It's um, so 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 he's going to hit and come up like this, um, and then so Roberto didn't roll a six one or a six three, which he would have made the five point with had he not been hit. Um, but the the other point about this four five four move, I suppose, is that even if Roberto what, whatever Roberto rolls, apart from the numbers that we're going to make the five point, it's not such a destructive move for Hideaki's position. So, to go back to principles, I think the general principle is that you don't really want to put a checker on the ace point. It's very important in backgammon to keep your checkers in front of your opponent's pieces and to just use your checkers efficiently to, un that means unstacking points, making new points, keeping those points when you've made them, and unstacking uh, checkers off, off those points. That's to say that when you've got more than, um, let's say, four checkers on a point, it's imperative to try and release one of those checkers so it can do something advantageous um, to improve your position. I suppose backgammon is a game where you're always trying to improve your position and the quid pro quo of that is you're trying to um, um, make your opponent's position get worse. So anyway, back to this position. So uh, Roberto has rolled a 4-5. I might not be able to finish this match at this pace. I mean, I clearly won't be able to, but even just in the first move, there's lots of things to say. So Roberto rolls this 5-3. So he hasn't hit, and Hideaki's position, as I said, hasn't got a lot worse. Um, and So Roberto chooses to um, hit, which is, I think, what I would have done. So now... The game plan for white, I suppose, even before rolling the dice, is to try and stop Hideaki from making the 20 point, which is Roberto's 5 point. Um, so, although he couldn't point on him, he can hit him loose off that point, and, and um, that's what he's going to do, hoping that, obviously, that Hideaki won't come in. Um, and hit him back, and that that he can just make that point. If Roberto, I mean, it's easy to see. I don't know what level people are. If there are any, if indeed there's anyone watching this, but if if Roberto makes this point, most people know um, that that's a huge improvement in the position. Um, the only detracting factor is, that let's say he makes it with a six, then he's going to have three extra men on the six point, which um, were desperate to be used and could have been used to make the five point. Well, a lot to say. So, yeah, a lot to say. So, obviously, Hideaki wants to roll a five. He doesn't, though, but he will make the five point. He'll hit twice. This is an easy play. I'm not going to stop. Maybe I will just stop over each move so we get an idea. So, so that was just an easy play. Um, no... If you're playing backgammon to look at all the possible moves and then eliminating anything that's wrong and then finally getting to your move by a process of elimination, um, that that process would lead you to make this play fairly simply. There's You can eliminate almost everything because nothing else does as much as this play does making a five point and putting a second one on the bar. Um, and then, wait, whoa, 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 I should say, let's let's imagine that Roberto hadn't rolled. Now, if I'm Hideaki, I will know that, or I will start to think that certain numbers that Roberto rolls here will make the position for me, next go, a proper cue. To, I use this word proper, meaning that... Um, the computer would cube it and the equity would dictate that you increase your equity by cubing. 
But in other words, um, Hideaki will be able, would be will be able to double after certain dice rolls by Roberto. So imagine if Roberto didn't come in with a six five, then um, you can see that Hideaki will want to queue, um, and it, I don't know, it could even be a pass. I doubt it, maybe. But my point is, is that a strong player, maybe like you know one of the very best players in the world, Hideaki will know that he could be cubing and just to get ahead of the game a tiny bit um, helps us to make the right decisions and of course the more we know about backgammon the less mental energy we need to expend during each decision so although my PR hasn't improved an enormous amount in probably about 15 years my ability to sum up positions uh, more quickly has strengthened enormously. Um, so we will see if Roberto rolls a double five or a double six or a six five and then question what will happen if he brings one man in rolls a four six or a four five. Those are, so he brings one man in with a two five. Okay, that was his role. I was confused by the baffle box. And now Hideaki will think about cubing, I guess he's probably should cube, but he's not going to cube, I don't know why, maybe I've seen this before. Um, by the way, if anyone is watching, um, yeah, oh wow, nine watchers, so yeah, just write questions, if anyone's like, please tell me like if this is like way too slow and stodgy and boring or if this is helpful but there's just so so much um there's so much in it um got my man lenny and david yeah and um so just um just write questions please please just have a question just write any old question even if you don't so hideaki is stopping to think And he's obviously seeing that things like 5-1, I'll pause it again, like 5-1 is a very strong number because it hits and covers. And what you're always often trying to do, well, always often, what you're often trying to do is prevent your opponent from making an anchor. If you can put two checkers in the air, you've made it very difficult for your opponent to make an anchor, or you're making it much more difficult. So the numbers 5-1 and 6-1 do that. 6-5 is pretty good, but has to leave a shot on the ace point. It will obviously make the two point. Um, and then double six will is is like lights out. It's like makes the one point and makes the two point. So even just having five numbers to me suggests this is a pretty big cube actually. Um, if you've got like five or six very powerful numbers, then you can be... I have a question, where did you get your hair done at Visage on England's Lane by Barry? And it cost, cost a fucking shit. I couldn't believe how much it cost. Maybe, but okay. I'll go a bit faster because um, Mochi has re requested it. Okay, so let's go. I think he should cube is what I'm saying. Do we agree? Do we agree that, I mean, Mochi, tell me, do you, do you see a position with like five or six strong market losing sequences and think well that could be enough even if you don't have nine so I've unpaused and Hideaki is thinking I think he should double on the strength of I'm just repeating myself the five one the six one there's the double six double four will make the ace point and hit this man on 20 um, it, it's the, the the position looks worse than it is in that there's so much value. There's a lot of blitz value that you don't often see. I think he should be cubing this. Um, I don't know how to play the four three, so this is difficult. He's gonna hit. Okay, so probably hitting. 
Okay. So it wasn't his best number. And now that R Roberto's come in with a 4 1, then the cube is less threatening if he wants to cube. Okay, and this is, th th I mean, this is tricky now. So he's got a 6 to play. And if it were me, I would be like thinking, fuck. Because. The, me the, the the play I really want to make is 10 to 4, but it leaves um, shots in board, which is not really what you want to do. I mean, in s it, it, our, our thinking that when we start playing is that we, 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 we should be hitting on the outside and not leaving too many shots. But notice that if you leave the anchor and you leave and you, and you hit this man here, then... He has got sixes, fives, and threes to hit this man, plus the sixes are duped to hit this man. So it's leaving a lot of shots. But all I know is from a, a match, maybe no double skill and difficult cube. Okay, um, I um, all I from a match sort of what's the word? Practical match playing point of view. I would be finding it difficult now to to know which six to play. I suppose looking at it for two seconds more, okay, so he just makes the bar, oh, maybe this is, okay, so two one will, will is easy, we'll make the anchor and then the ace could be this or could be coming up, I'm not sure. Three two. Now that he has a four prime, he will hit, and then lots of things can happen. Let me pause it. Lots of things can happen. I mean, in my view, where he, you can see the dice roll. He did roll a number that makes the anchor. When you've got three checkers back, always be on the alert that if you get the fourth one back, not that that's exactly what you want to do. That you can make sort of a semi back game kind of a thing. Four prime is permanent asset. Yeah, I should do this with. I should do this with. Um, I should just let Mochi do this rather than, yeah. I see that. I see that. Um, so having three men back, if you manage to get a fourth man back, you can make a semi, a sort of semi back game, which I think, in principle, is better than just having three men back. The only thing is, of course, having more th four men back increases the likelihood of you being gammoned, or possibly doesn't. So actually, I'm not sure about that. So lots of things I'm not sure. All I can do is give versions of general principles that I think. But anyway, the point is is that now he's he's got a, a fourth man back, which is kind of bad for his position, but he's managed to make some sort of four, second anchor, which complicates the game. It could be... Okay... For some reason, I have to admit, I didn't see hitting. Now with the 2-1, there's lots of plays. Probably s you could split, you could... Yeah, okay. There's too many plays to consider. But interestingly, he didn't cue. And now this is a difficult play. So what's going on here? Um... You, there's so many things going on, for me anyway. The question is, do you have sort of enough timing to maybe, if you can, make the 22 at some point? Or maybe even make the 23 at some point? Um, you what clearly want to make the 5 point. But then if you make the five point with the three, then if you want to not leave shots, you have to put this spare on the six point, which is horrible. Um, then there's a play that hits twice, which puts the men sort of not really where you want them. To start with, you don't want the man on the five point on the three point. Um, why was stepping up with the one good? Thank you for the question. Which one was that? 
stepping up with the one. We're stepping up with the one. This is going to take so long, just bear with me. But I want to be able to answer that. Maybe, did he step up with the one? Where did he... Where, Oh, you mean with the five, the five one? Oh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I don't know which one. I think go forward. He isn't far enough back for Becca. It was a few moves back. Okay, so screw that. I, I'm, I'm my, my. We just have to replay these one, replay these moves. So yeah, the two one, yeah. I, now it's clear to me. I think to hit on the five part. Now he doesn't cube at all. I think this is possibly the cube that Mochi thinks is a cube. And then he plays bar twenty two. As I said, there are you could even play thirteen eleven here. And now we have the three two, um, and. I don't know what what would you play with the three two. Um, the, the the most natural thing for me to do is to make a five point with the three. Um, and then what do you play twenty four twenty two? I don't want to play eight to six. Um, I know that. Yeah, I don't like. I don't like. I don't like this. Am I am I wrong not to like this? I don't like to make the, the go deep. Now now you, basically what he's doing is that he's putting, he's effectively putting these checkers sort of behind at least one of Hideaki's checkers. Or to look at it another way, he's leaving this enormous gap. Um, and imperative when you have men back is to not put men behind your opponent's checkers. So the worst thing you could have with four men back is men on the ace point. Making the three point is safe. Yeah, but what for your next trick, you're going to have to be hitting loose on the... If he comes in on the five point, you're going to have to be hitting loose. So safety is not going to be able to be maintained unless you roll like a perfect double four. Um, I mean, I don't like it. I don't know what I would play. Um, so no, still no... Cube and now he's made a ten point. He's got like a broken six prime. Um, so to me, the obvious play is hitting loose, and I think he should cube this. Having four men back um, and having the, made the three point, I've just paused it for a second. Um, this is, I mean, it's hard now. I'm commentating. It's like probably. A pass, yeah, I mean, pretty, could be a pretty good pass. I mean, noticing that he's only really got three checkers here to play with of timing. The rest of his men, if he gets hit, are going to be sent back. Um, and these men are semi out of play. So if I ha had to call it, I really don't know. I would guess that it's not even takeable. I don't, I mean, it can never be too good at this school. Um, um, Hideaki looks sort of studious. Um, I don't really know what what was going on there. Would you have cubed? Would, would you guys have cubed? Wow, very difficult. So now um, we can slot slot the nine point or just do something like this okay and Roberto is just gonna feel like he's maybe getting away with one but also not really knowing being absolutely clear on how to play I mean how to play this you're running out of time you can't make a back game and start hitting now with a double three you're obviously gonna make the five point hit loose on the four point and then probably be taking if you're cubed um, so it gets difficult because now your position is improving and then you could make this sort of enormous mistake of taking a cube which is still quite a big pass which I don't think is a situation here but it gets really sort of agonizing if you're not a hundred percent 
this is just a standard play he's going to make. And now, I mean, even this, he didn't queue before, so he's not, I guess he's thinking it's not good enough. But now, after the fan, of course, this is a totally different ball game. I mean, his, his hand's in the way, but we remember the position. Now there's very, very solid going forward chances. Making the, making the four point is enormous. You've got twos and threes to come up. You've got fives to come out. Um, the game, that fan, is an, is an enormous game changer. An enormous game changer. So it didn't roll the 4 5, which would have been genius. So he's just taking his time, but of course he's going to make it and come down. Now this is never anything, this is like beaver, beaver territory. Um, and now here, oh, well, let, me, let, me, let me just. Here, so look at the position here. He might have been passing. Anyone, anyone venture a a um, an opinion on on whether that was a, a pass or not? I, I think it was. I'm fairly comfortable that it was a double. Um, let's. We've got to this position. White on roll, um, and any five is extremely strong. Um, and black's got strip points as well, so black, although he does have this checker to play with, what I mean by that is if and when black comes in, he's going to have to play another number. So if he comes in with a 1-4, then he has to play the 4 from the 11 point. But let's say he comes in with a 1-2. Okay, we'll make 23, of course, silly me. Um, Black's position is fixed, but it's looking a bit liable to, 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 to break. It's not very flexible, it's a bit brittle. Um, so, um, I'm just going to carry it on. Double four, obviously, is very bad. How bad? Is it the worst? The, the only reason I'm hesitant to call it the worst is because you can, of course, you switch to the ace point, you can still put two men in the air and you still retake. Oh, you, okay, you can hit lose. I couldn't say for sure that that's, that's wrong. It could well be right, in fact. So you give yourself fours to cover. That's a bonus. That could, could make it the right play. So noticing here, so Hidiak is stopping to think, I don't think this can be a cue. Um, be a very a big blunder, I, I guess. So noticing that by making this play, he gives himself a different number here to cover the ace point from the one that he needs to come out, and that's enormous. You have to be able to diversify your numbers um, in a lot of situations in backhand. Um, so he is stopping to think, but of course he won't double. Perhaps he would double if he knew you were rolling 2-1. And now with five men back, I mean, is this going to be too good after the roll? So you make the two points. The question is, is that if you've got any chance of winning, you hit twice. I suppose you do. He, I trust him. I mean, I he makes that play really quickly. Um, I trust that he's making the right play. Um, so he make, he hits twice because he thinks that um, he's got going to have a chance of making it. So presumably, if he is going to have a chance of making it, then he has to be able to take the cue or or hope that Hideaki doesn't actually queue. I'm guessing that he, well, I, I don't think he can take this. So the only way that this play can be wrong is if it pushes it from double pass territory into making it too good to double. So, I, I mean, maybe five men back needing fives, I can't see the take here. I don't think it could be anywhere near too good. This is tricky. Surely Hideaki is going to cube this. 
he is taking. So Len thinks he's going to take. Let's see if he actually cubes. Yeah, well, all fours are going to leave another shot. Really? Is this anyone else? Anyone with the with me on the pass side? Um, I have watched this, but I don't remember what Roberto does. So, but I possibly should remember. But it, it fours. They're not good. Only four two makes the point. So the worst thing, of course, that can happen is as black is if you fan and then consider white's position. If if white if black comes in with just one six, then is white in such decent shape? You think it's a pass though. He is taking a well. well, hey, well hey, Len. Hey, you think he's taking, but why is it a pop? You think it's a pass, but he's taking. You've seen you've seen this before. Honestly. I must be making, so maybe it's an easy take. I kind of trust Roberto's judgment there. Um, did we roll the 4-2? Did Roberto roll the 4-2? He did. So, of course, he's going to cover. I mean, I'm always worried that I'm saying absolute bullshit here. I'm doing a stream. I would have had, wouldn't have the minerals to take. No, I don't think it's a matter of, 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 you know, testicle sides. I think it's like more, I just didn't think it was a take, but what what's going on? Who's, oh, I see, he found, he's thinking about re right. Oh no, what, what? Oh, he's not making, he's not making the, can that, I mean, being hit by a one is really bad. Okay, so he didn't, can I just go back for a second there? Just to really, oh no, have I gone too far? Oh, he's going to end up winning the game. So that's the double four. It's just the double four, the cube. It's just to do double speed. That's the cube, then the take. Come on, and he, he pretty much takes like, oh no, within what? This is there's his delay time two three. I think he takes in about eight seconds time. So you know he's had it like a kind of a think about it. Five men back. The only thing about Hideaki's position which is bad is this blot here that can be picked up with a massive tempo. Um, and then the fan, and then he rolls the 4-2. I can't imagine that I would maybe bet £2.50 that not covering is uh, wrong. So I think that covering with the 4-2 is right. Does anyone want to bet me £2.50 on this play? I mean, I just... I mean, yeah, you can't roll a six. If you don't come up to 22, you need sixes, but I don't want to give him a one. Your sixes are killed anyway. It just doesn't seem right to me to um, not make the ace. If you get one man sent back, so he's taken something on the strength of, you know, m making the ace point, and then when he rolls the 4-2, he doesn't actually make the ace. Um... So, of course, if the guy doesn't roll an ace, then you're good to go with this play. And so everything's gone right for, and then like a 5-6, so he can make, of course, make the 16 point, which he will do. Now, but he's still leaving the ace. But he, now the ace, the 6-5 was a genius shot, makes a huge difference to the position. Um, but let's see what's happening on this one game rollout. Do you hit? Or, well, if you if you cover, you don't have a four. There's no uh, no legal four. So he's gonna hit. So what 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 does he need? Does he, well, he can only play. They're playing very deliberately. He can only play four and ten. So now he has fours to hit on, on the six point. And then let's see, he's picking up the dice. Sorry for the. I agree, I don't think this was a cube. Now a fan. 
I would consider again, but you see. Okay, this, this, oh, I always click at the last moment. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So he's got one checker on the 19 point. White on roll in this position. Um, sixes will c come down from from uh, the, the 16 point, then fives will come out. So I suppose what's the way to look at this position? Either is the market lost already? So that's one complication. I guess not. So therefore you decide what the market losing sequences are. Um, and then pretty much a five without a four, a five anything and a fan. Hmm. And this is difficult because then I don't even know if a, it. So if white rolls a five and black fans is it a pass who thinks it is if white rolls a five and black continues to fan let's say not a two five but anything but a one five and two five let's say a six five then he's got one man back here suppose it makes a difference what five he rolls but let's say he rolls a five five one i don't know sorry five six coming round. Is it a pass? I guess it is. So everything but 5-4, that's 9 fours plus no 6 is a market loser. Plus you've got the numbers that, that pick and pass, which uh, you've got this man here that is 3 away, so if you roll 3x, you pick and pass. I mean he's stopping, okay. You've got to stop here. I mean, there's a shit, a fucking shitload of guns here. Um, this is not necessarily a, a common position, but it's very normal. It's a very normal position with the outside prime. Um, it should be something that we recognize. So, as I said, threes are going to be good. Three men in the air. But... If you don't roll an immediate five, then your chance of getting stuck back are pretty high. Um, I didn't remember that he rolled that. So that's the, must be the best. And only, only double six is taking. Of course, you must pick up the block here. You cannot leave the man on the six point to be hit because you're, it's, you're cubing out anyway. If you get hit, you lose your, your cube. So I think that is a correct application of the concept. The point is, is that if you get hit now, if you leave the checker there and you get hit, I hate being in either spot here. Exactly, yeah. But we need to, that's the thing in backgun, we need to be precise and decide exactly what's going on um, before the 5-5. Five five. Yeah, would you have doubled, Pete? Um, really difficult. I'm not. I, I'd have to look at it for much longer than he did. Um, but here, if you don't pick up the man, you get hit back with a six. I don't think you can cue. But if you pick up, if you pick up the man, he rolls a six. Then you can definitely cue, and then question whether he can actually take. So I think he's going to pick up the man. I don't think Roberto has played this game particularly well. Um, yeah, so Mochi, if you're still here, I was going to do your match against um, Hideaki, against Morris. Um, but this one came up first. Um, so, I mean... Unless, unless you're absolutely determined for some reason to win four points, like someone says, you've got to win four points here, then maybe you keep the man slotted on the six point. But this is not even... I mean, he took longer to think about that than... So now the six, and then this has got to be something. Right, OK, so let's stop here. What's going on? Um... 
This is really difficult, I think. So there's there's two there's two things that what there's three things that are going on same as before. One is okay, not same as before. So let's say there are two things. There's one situation where White rolls a three, and then he picks the man up on the on the six point, and that's obviously two one is going to maybe hit two one. No, probably not. Double one will hit. So it's threes and double one. And then anything but three six will will pick and pass. Those that's that's one set of dice rolls. Then you've got um, the two five and the one six. That's four of them, which make the sixteen point. Once you've made the sixteen point, you're good to go. Then you've got anything with a two that comes up here, and it gives you uh, well actually you probably want a one. Um, to give you sixes to escape, so I guess this is takeable. I don't know what he does. Is this ridiculous to take this? So if this was takeable, it suggests that the cube, that the position before wasn't a cube. Possibly. Is this having problems with my arrows? Anyone got any opinions? Please just um, don't be shy. Um, I mean, I'm I'm sort of a bit upset with my. I mean, I just don't know. So it's a fifteen point match, um, but things like five, four, five, three, and then even a. I guess you have to even like five four five three. He still has to come in with a six. Black still might fan. It's just very difficult to get this the checker from the twenty three point out. Um, Hideaki will. Pop, I mean, he thinks he's probably better than Roberto, but yeah, it could well be a pass. That was um, yeah nil nil to fifteen. So anyone. I mean, I, I feel like I'm so alone here. Will someone help me out with the... But Roberto did actually um, get, get Hideaki to pass. Okay. So what was that? 4-1 for Hideaki. Maybe he'll slot. I don't know. I don't know what his style is. Just plays the normal play. And then 6-2. Right, okay. Course. I'm possibly playing bar 24 coming to the 18 point to okay that doesn't duplicate that could be the right play I don't know but now we notice that um, Hideake has got three men back and Roberto's got one and a half men back so he's got an advantage um, he's going to make the 10 point now so it's a simple enough game as it stands so far Hideaki will make the 5 and the 7. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay, sorry. This is obviously better. Can you talk about why he slots here? Yes. Yes, I can. Let's go. Where are we? Why, why, why did I never manage to get to... Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, so this is the 5-1. Let's get it on the board and pause. So, trying to get the reasons in a, in a sort of order of priority, but I suppose the main thing, the main, one of the main, if not the main reason, is that you're behind in the race. So, your priority is no longer racing. Your priority is other game plans, other strategies. Um, one strategy which is always great is to make the five point because it is part of a, an eventual prime and a blitz. The five point is part of a prime and a possible blitz. Here, when you've got three men back, you're not really setting it up as a blitzy 
position, but you're certainly setting up up as a prime part of an eventual prime. Um, if he can successfully make the five point, then it's an enormous gain. Um, th th that th so those are like the factors involved in why you would want to slot. Then you have to say to yourself, well, what is the risk in slotting? Um, so we know that he came in. Let me just put it on the board then. Well, before he did that, I the play I I saw was coming in on the twenty four point and playing twenty three to eighteen. Um, I won't discuss that since you asked. Since you asked, yeah, Pete, that's a that's another factor. I won't that. Let's put it on the board. Okay, there it is on the board. Oh, okay, it's unfortunately Roberto's obscuring his checkers. But um, as Pete says, I was trying to get to the reasons why you wouldn't stop. Oh, I wish I could. Get back a little bit. Really tricky. So the the five one is this. No, oh, arrows are not working. Okay. Well, in any case, imagine you have the, the man on the five point and the man on the t on on the twenty point. The, this is the risk of doing it: is that you don't duplicate the the um, the four that Roberta will need a four to hit the man on the twenty point. Um, but and uh, and um, he will also have ones and threes to hit the man on on the on his own five point. And since the fours, ones, and threes aren't duplicated, you risk that you are going to be hit twice, and that is not so good for your position. So if I had to sum it all up. Can I use the cursor keys? You are a genius. If I had to sum it all up, then you, well, you have to, to to weigh out weigh up the the loss that you you that, that accrues to you from being hit twice with four one and four three, and then if maybe there's something else with, to the get with the gain of being hit. It seems like that Hideaki has made the right play. I mean, I'll go with him. He's a very strong player, and as Pete said. Um, you um, have diversified your checkers so that um, if you do get hit and you don't get double hit, then you've got a good chance of coming in and making. So if Hideaki gets hit on his own five point, he can come in and make make his twenty point, which is a good thing. So all in all, I think his play seems like it's worth the risk. Hmm. Um, Steve. Steve says, "Do you want bot blocks both sides of the board?" Generally, not really, but but um, it, 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 it's worth the risk. The not really is when you get double hit. So as we know, um, this was one of the roles where it works works out completely. There is there may be some other roles where it works out completely, and then double one, he immediately. Issues the seven point. He sees how strong, and I agree with him making the twenty point and make the five. And so now Roberto just wants to get the hell out of there. So he should just play twenty four eighteen and play with one block. I guess that n no one in the world would do anything um, other than come up and come down. No, no, five one is illegal. Okay, so is he go? Is now he sees it's a five one. Is he going to come out and play twenty four eighteen? Um. I don't see why you wouldn't, if you're going to come up to the 23, then you might as well just come out all the way. Um, and the alternative play, which I think some less experienced players would play, would be to, to play 24-23 and play one down from the eight point. And it can turn out well, you know, sometimes you get missed. 12 out of 36 dice rolls will miss you here on... Um, oh. Where's my? Oh, it's not going. 
going. I've lost my cursor. 24 dice rolls will miss, as and 3-2 was one of the numbers that missed. Um, and 3-1 is doesn't get it saved, which is really what um, Roberto wants. He doesn't necessarily want to hit, but being able to hit only leaves two shot, uh, twos, everything with a two, but a 6-2 but a will hit. Um, and now Hideaki, I think, is an easy play. We're coming on the 22 point, make the four point to stay back. Um, let me try and pause. Let me try and pause. Play, play to the ten, and slot the four. I don't know what you mean with that. Three, two, okay. Um, three, two, 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 three, bring his checkers in to a point where, and I always say this to my students, where that you can cube from. It's not necessarily just to win the game. You're able to win the win the game with a cube turn, and you're also able to leverage and increase the, the value of the game by turning the cube um, and by getting someone to take the cube. So what we're trying to do is notice, uh, maybe from reference positions when we get more experience, when from positions like this, where do these positions become doubles? That's what I'm looking for in a position like this. I don't know immediately, all I know is that I need to make the four point desperately in a position like this um, in order to be able to consider the cube. Um, there's just too much um, holding equity here for for black, having the checker way, all the way back on the 24, plus having the five point, plus having an amazing board, I guess that white is only like a 60% favourite, um, if that, I don't know. So 3-2, he's looking to see whether he needs to make the 22. Um, this is again, it's like a decision. He doesn't, maybe, I don't know. Do we know the factors? I can't try and pause. No, I'm too slow. What well, I didn't even, my arrows are going haywire. my arrows I wanted to concentrate on the 3-2 and the advantages is advantages and disadvantages of making the anchor there if anyone can try and tell tell me why what what the considerations are for making it or not that would be good so now he can still make the anchor and now he chooses to I, I, I think I was going to be make, making the anchor before um, okay now I can pause so I'm just pausing it to just take stock of the position here um, because black has got two anchors in board and combined with a strong inner board white is going to have trouble um, some trouble at least bringing the position home without leaving a shot and then possibly having the, the checker that is exposed hit and because of that white probably doesn't want to cube yet however if white makes an improvement in, in his position such as moving the three checkers from the 11 point to the 7 point then the position becomes a lot safer White has landing points for his checkers, and then he might want to consider doubling with the prospect of black having to eventually leave. Um, oh, I better not touch these arrows because they're having to leave the, 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 the anchor on the 20 point. So let's carry on. So. So just to repeat myself, I'm in Roberto's shoes. I'm just trying to manoeuvre my way into a position that I can cube from, and that, of course, is making a, a safe, a safe position, a position that's um, as safe as possible. And it looks like because you want to be clearing uh, 
well, having said that, you actually, yeah, you want to be clearing the 11 point because they're both in direct range of the, the anchor on the 20 point. I will try and use my arrows. Therefore, you want to get a checker off the 11 point in order to prepare to clear it. You can't clear the point until it's only got two checkers on unless you roll a double. So now he can clear it. He can just play those checkers from the back 11 point onto the 10 point, putting five checkers on there. <coughs> no, oh, what was this? Okay. Possi I mean, I didn't see possibly. Okay, that's a good play, which I didn't see from Hideaki coming off the 22 point. Um, and now, but the, 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 there is definitely a cube action. What you just need to look at is how the dice rolls play, and they look, on the first glance, to, to play quite adequately. So if you consider from the bottom up, double one um, will hit twice, two one will pick, uh, hit, hit and cover, three one will pick up, will, will lift the 11 point. Even just now, after I've looked at three or four dice rolls, I'm pretty confident that I'm going to cube, and I'll just check for another, depending on how much clock time I have, whether or not it's a, a two, uh, a normal time setting, or whether it's, yeah, so I would cube, and I guess that you've got to take, because you've got a, f a, a, f a five point prime with the best four point board, and you're going to be able to keep the 20 point. If this is a pass, it's a very difficult pass to make. Plus, of course, Hideaki is trailing in the match, which, so the 5-3 is a very easy play. You're ahead in the race, you just clear the 11 point. And now, it could be a pass after clearing the 11 point and a roll, some roll by, by black. It could be a pass. So, I mean, white's got to be 20 pips up. What, how is black going to win this game? Well, he's not going to get a shot, that's for sure. I mean, not for sure, but he's unlikely to. Um, yeah, keep the keep the comments going, guys. Um, Pete and Stephen. I say he's not going to leave a shot, but now his position weakens. He will clear the seven. So these positions are just like just checking that you're not overlooking a. Uh, uh, a play that is better than the play that you have to make. Here you have to break the seven, but it's not actually that bad to break the seven. Um, I mean, has he got a one to play? I don't know how I would play the one. Maybe I would just continue five to four. Okay, so he doesn't. And I said, is he, he's not going to leave a shot? Well, of course he does leave a shot. Um, and it looks like he's going to have to not only leave a shot, but leave two blocks, because it leaves the minimum number of shots, I think. It just leaves all threes and five, five. And now after the fan, you've got to be pretty happy and confident that you're going to bring this game home safely. So this game is a lot simpler. Backgammon is a game of... So fewer, very difficult games, and then suddenly, uh, or very simple games, and suddenly you get a very difficult game, which tests different features of the game and, and tests your ability to understand those different features of the game. And some of the, the, the positions that some people are strong at are positions that they're, uh, other positions they're not very strong at. Um, and... If Extreme Gammon was evolve, evolving at, at some point in the future, XG will be able to rate the difficulty level of each play and each cube action. And so PR won't just be some, oh, I played a three, it will be um, adjusted for, for difficulty. If that's possible to do, I don't see why not. Um, and White does actually win maybe... 10, 12, 15% gammons from this position. If he rolls, maybe, maybe, maybe not that much actually. It looks like he'd need two doubles. Yeah. So, 
a lot to consider. Just two, two, two games I've, I've looked at so far. Um, enormous. And I mean, of course, why not move to the bar when he covered the blot? I didn't. I'm not. I can't. He covered the blot. I didn't see that. The chat is a bit. The problem is, I think the chat is delayed. So. So the gammon is saved as far as I can see, so it's two all. Sorry, it's four nil. <laughs> and just leading four nil, even leading two nil in a fifteen point match, you've probably got like fifty seven, fifty eight percent. Leading four nil, you've probably got like sixty four. Maybe. Just guessing. Maybe more than sixty four percent. That's quite a lot, sixty six possibly. Anyone want to venture a guess? So Roberto is like assuming the even and even that they're evenly matched is uh, is like a sixty four percent favorite, sixty six percent favorite. Okay, so I prefer this this sequence for black. That's for sure. Yeah, it was a good double three for 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 white, but this fills the gap and uh, fills both gaps basically. And now. Um, I think this is first of all a tricky check to play. Really, you want to be running. I don't think you want to stay back. Okay, but then this is very eminently cubable. I mean, look, you've got the best three-point board. Your your opponents like as far back as possible with two checkers on your twenty-four point, and you've got reasonable possibilities of extending the block. Not necessarily in this role. Alone, but in, in later rolls, so I'm guessing it's a double take. I think the cube action is, as far as cube action goes, it's a pretty easy, it's like a very easy decision for Hide and a slightly more difficult decision for Roberto, in that there's some slight suggestion, smidgen of passing in it, but um, I can't see that you would pass. Um, you can still split your back men with a two or a one. I mean, is Hideo not going to queue? I don't understand. You, 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 you can... The, the other thing that's very bad about White's position is that he hasn't got any... He, he, he hasn't got any checkers here, so that... You just know that... First of all, the thing to note is all his numbers have to be played off here, or basically off there. Now, if you have to play fives from here, they go there. Which is not safe yet, unless it's a five-two or a five-three. So, assuming that Hide doesn't make the bar, there's a premium on, or Roberto really needs to roll things like sixes to come out. And if he doesn't, then he's going to be allowing his position to deteriorate a bit, a bit more. Um, So I assume his six four was right. I would have is white passing if we move a check from thirteen to the eight or the nine. If we were checked from thirteen to the eight. Yeah, maybe. I see what you mean. Uh, he's not even cubing. I don't get I don't get that. So he's just gonna play two down. And now um, this is why you can see it's an easy take because you know it's six, any six, which includes one, five, and two, four. This is he should he should have doubled big four. I don't I don't see it. So now yeah, I mean this this is where my knowledge is not good enough because this. This could be a small take, yet the, the fact that it was, you see, he just takes like instantly there. I mean, this to me, now that you make that, then you're, you're, you're dead. You just don't, this position is, is, is gone, is absolutely gone. So yeah, Pete says it's a miscue. A miss How big was the, the cube? 2-1, uh, um, okay, so, so the 6 was good. The 2-1 is, 
Oh no, it's a two one for Roberto. Oh, he needs to split. I mean he needs to split, he can't just stay back and die. Um, and now I think Hideaki can just go for go for a G. He needs the he needs the gamut, so he definitely points on the deuce. Um, These are, di I mean, these are difficult plays for me, at least. The the play that wins the most games has to be the one that locks up the eight point. But if you lock up the eight point, then you've got to move your checkers from the sixteen point, which means that you're disengaging and letting him off the hook a little bit. Point three nine seven can't have been that big. Can't have been. It was a point three blunder to. So here, I I I I I believe that he has to make the two points, and then um, probably play two down to the eight point, um, with, with the obvious aim of closing out those checkers and being able to hit this man. So yeah, he's going to hit lose. Okay, yeah, fine. That's obviously the other play. <coughs> but Roberto's got a four-point board. Complete two, two. Yeah, I think it was the right play. I guess if you wanted to play it, then I think it was right. Um, uh, if Hide plays it as well, so one five is obvious. I don't think there's any reason for leaving the anchor. So um, e even if Roberto can roll a, a one, he's not in such good shape. Arguably a three four is well yeah it's is better, not even arguably. Sorry, that was a pass. So Pete was the the go before was a pass. This go was a pass, yeah. This go was a pass. If that's what you're saying that makes sense. So of course Roberto will hit now. This is how you win the game, and that's usually how you defend against losing it by winning it. Um so you need to uh, 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 10 or a 12 and I've no idea how to play this so really we, we see what the goals here are the goal is making the ace point but also escaping and we see that if we escape then we don't increase our chances of making the ace point which is a classic dilemma so what is more important escaping or making the ace point I think escaping you can still make the ace point if you don't escape but you can't necessarily escape even if you make the ace point. I wouldn't have played the three like he did. One, two. It's, it's, so it seemed like Robert, Roberto's kind of got what he deserved, not really un, an unreasonable uh, sequence. And here he's got his second double four where he could either switch or hit loose. Um, I think he has to. Oh no, he's not gonna. He's not gonna hit loose. He's not gonna. Oh right, you don't have to do anything. You could just leave him alone. Is that, is that right? I have to admit, I'm not. But now you just, you can run with sixes. So the three is force, of course. He would have fanned if he'd been hit, if, if, if Roberto had hit loose. So that's a simple play, you don't want to leave shots. So Roberto is basically just was giving up. Could speed this up a little, because not much is happening. So six one, and I guess that Roberto is going to be feeling a little bit disappointed that um, that he. Um, that he's in this position and wondering maybe whether it was a take or not, or maybe not. By the way, if anyone's watching this hasn't subscribed, please subscribe and it helps grow the channel. Please click like. 5-3 um, was forced and then 
Yeah, I think I'm going to speed this up because nothing much is happening here. And we want to get to interesting. Uh, we want to get to interesting positions. And basically, unless Reverso can roll like a, a magic double six, he's he's lost. So I would I think come into the six point here with the six, and then just and then just play. Okay, so he goes to this. I would have got hit. I don't think this cursor thing is going to work then. Oh yes it does, what a beauty, what a beauty mate! This cursor thing is the thing that has... Now I can just... How can I not know the cursor? So yeah, nothing's happening, let's do another curse. Love it. Um, yeah, nothing's happening, I mean, like, what, you know, he might, could win a G, and but so it's just got zilch chance of winning this. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there because this is like hard work, you know. Especially as I don't know the position, so I'm going to go straight to back in the studio and look up um, the match and see what was going down. But we, I will do the next. That we we're at. Um, Looks like four two to Roberto, and I will carry on. Um, I will carry on, maybe tomorrow. So he 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 should probably hit and take two men off. Yeah, like, there's no risk. Let's do this. Gentleman is like 4060s, 4060 in his favor, and he only looks 65 is obviously great. Okay, so what saves? Double to four saves. Okay, so it's four all. And so, you know, just a, a, a naughty little take maybe that, that um, Pete says was a 0 0.02 pass, which is not big. 0 0.02 is not big. Um, then you know Roberto got himself gammoned and it's like a high roll, a jackpot qualifier, a lot of money if you can actually win it. And yeah, that was I and that was this is a good match. I like this format. Um so everyone thanks for watching and I will be back um maybe tomorrow, two days later. Thanks for watching.